Hi there, and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on plate driving forces. In this, the second lecture on the topic, we'll talk about the physics of thermal convection. So we're going to talk basically about two different physical concepts. The first is the force balance in a viscous fluid in two dimensions, and then we'll talk about the 2D version of the heat flow equation. And so these are some things that we've previously seen in one-dimensional cases, either in the lectures on heat transfer or in the lectures about the basics of fluid mechanics, and now we're going to look at some two-dimensional examples. And the Turcotte and Schubert book goes through a rather lengthy derivation of how we get here. I'm going to skip over that and essentially just give you the highlights. The basic idea, of course, is that we have thermal convection in the Earth that's a result of buoyancy, um, that this relatively hot material that expands becomes thermally buoyant uh, as a result of thermal expansion of rocks in the mantle. And so we have force balance equations that we can formulate in two dimensions, just like we would have done for the uh, channel flow case in the previous set of video lectures. And here we're looking at the vertical force balance of the pressure force, gravity, and viscous forces in 2D. So you can see here that uh, the balance of forces, of course, has to go to zero. And here we have a uh, pressure force term, dp, dy, it's a negative term uh, for the pressure gradient. Then there's a gravitational force term, simply rho g. And then we have here our viscous force term, which is the viscosity times the second derivative of the velocity um, in the vertical direction with respect to x plus the second derivative of the velocity in the vertical direction with respect to y. And so that term, that whole thing combined is our um, viscous force term in 2D. And of course, we've seen before, p is pressure, rho is density, eta is viscosity, and v is velocity in the y direction. Now, if we want to account for the buoyancy force, of course, we now have to include some kind of variable density. And so we can do that by introducing um, this simple equation here, where we say that the density rho is equal to some initial density plus rho prime, where rho prime is a density perturbation. And the size of that perturbation, of course, is going to be much smaller than, um, than rho naught, the reference density. And so if we do a little bit of algebra here, um, we can basically substitute this variable density term into the 2D force balance equation. And we can make a simplification here. Uh, I'm kind of doing two things at once, uh, just for the sake of being a little bit shorter. Um, we can also make a substitution where we put in the term capital P for pressure, which is the normal pressure term P minus the reference density rho naught times G times y, which is the depth. Uh, so if we make that substitution, then our equations actually get a little bit simpler, and we end up with a horizontal force balance equation that looks like this, where we have now this dp, so capital P, dx term plus um, eta times, here is the uh, second derivative of the horizontal velocity with respect to x and y. And then in the vertical force balance, we have something that looks quite similar. Um, there's our d big P dy, plus now it's rho prime g here, so we've eliminated one of our terms um, that was our rho naught g term that would have been there otherwise, plus again the viscosity times the second derivative of the velocity in the vertical direction with respect to x and y. So those are our force balance equations in the horizontal and vertical sense. And the reason that we have a change in density now becomes important. So earlier it was made clear that we must have some kind of change in density in order to have a buoyancy driven um, fluid flow. Here we define that that change in density, the rho prime, is simply minus rho naught times alpha v times some temperature difference here. And so alpha v is a volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion. And so what this term is going to do is essentially determine how large this density perturbation is as a function of the difference between the temperature of the material minus the reference temperature. And that reference temperature would correspond to 
the reference density rho naught. Now the force balance term, then if we plug this guy in for rho prime, the vertical force balance gets again a little bit more complicated, but now we have things in terms of temperature. And so here we have uh, the same term we had before, the dp dy plus the, the this force term, it's the same as it was before for the vertical case. And now in place of the rho prime g term, we now have this g rho naught alpha v times t minus t naught. And that's simply just substituting in the term for the thermal expansion uh, to calculate the density perturbation. So that will give us now the ability to calculate the change in um, buoyancy as a function of temperature. But of course, we need to also then calculate the two-dimensional thermal um, heat transfer equation because we're going to have a convecting fluid that's going to be both conducting heat and potentially transferring heat by convection. And so uh, again, this equation is derived in a rather, um, well, not terribly lengthy, but a longer derivation that I'd like to go through in this case. But uh, the end result is something that looks, I think, probably quite familiar. We have a dt dt term, so there's a transient temperature change with time plus now we have a u dt dx, so that's the temperature, uh, change in temperature along the x-axis with the horizontal velocity, plus the vertical velocity times the change in temperature in the y direction, dt dy, is equal to kappa times, now it's the second derivative of temperature with respect to x and with respect to y. So um, all of these things we've seen previously in the 1D case, and this is just now adding in uh, advection in two directions, and conduction in two directions, and we've seen um, everything else previously. Now, just as a reminder, these are basically then the terms we're left with. Time-dependent heat transfer term, our convection or advection terms, as we've mentioned them previously, and then a heat conduction equation. So those are the basic governing equations for this buoyancy-driven uh, thermal convection. And uh, from here, we're going to look at some uh, examples and some some other uh, things we'd like to consider based on these equations. All right, so as usual, it's time to take your quiz, and when we come back, we'll talk about how to calculate the onset of when a fluid will begin convecting.